Hey guys, wanted to give a quick overview of the newly announced Nikon D4S. This is Nikon's biggest and most expensive camera designed for professionals only. It's gonna be about the same size and shape as this one series Canon, which means big, heavy, and like a brick. You can just toss it and it will not break. All the buttons and such are completely weathered sealed so you can have it out in the rain. This is a camera designed for the working professionals who are uh, out taking their camera into the field for months at a time who can't escape bad weather if it starts to rain or storm. These are cameras that are completely reliable and they're 100% of the time. They have very different design priorities than the lower end cameras. For example, the D800 is like half the price of the new D4S, which will be about 6,500 bucks. The D800 though has a 36 megapixel sensor Whereas that D4S has only 18 megapixels. That seems counterintuitive, right? Why would you pay twice as much for half as many megapixels? That's the professional priorities being looked out for there because pros don't necessarily want a ton of detail in the sensor. These bigger files are harder to transfer to your boss. They take longer to process. They burn through memory cards faster and they don't necessarily have a lot more information in them. They do have a lot more noise too, which requires, again, more post-processing, which means more work for the professional. The amateur might love the detail, but the pro finds it kind of a burden. So in these high-end bodies, they give you a smaller megapixel count, and those 18 megapixels are gonna be completely sharp and clean, allowing you to quickly process the images and put them out into production without a lot of noise cleanup. Based only on Nikon's announcement, I can kind of guess that this camera is going to have cleaner images. It sounds like it's gonna have about one stop cleaner images. I'm saying that because they extended the maximum standard ISO up to 25,600 and they allowed it to be expanded up to like 400,000 something. Now I did see sample images at 400,000 and they look awful. But it's nice to have that extra option in there in case you ever need to push it and shoot in really low light. Nikon's also saying it's going to focus faster than the previous Nikon D4, and I think that has to do with the fact that they sped the mirror up. First, they're bragging about shorter blackout times. So when you take a picture with a DSLR, the mirror has to move out of the way so it can take a picture. And when that mirror is up, you can't see through the viewfinder. You can't see through the viewfinder until that mirror goes back down. And that's the blackout time. So if you're taking 10 frames a second, 11 frames that the Nikon D4S can do, that means that your viewfinder is blinking in and out 11 times a second, which can be pretty disorienting and makes it hard to track moving subjects. So they sped that mirror up a little bit more, which means you'll have shorter blackout times. It should just be a very small refinement. But a side effect of having that mirror move down faster is that the camera should be able to focus better because DSLRs can only use their phase detect focusing system when the mirror is down. That mirror is a special mirror that reflects some of the light over to the phase detect, sy phase detect focusing system. Therefore, if the mirror is down longer, the focusing system can get more information and can focus faster. So I think the improved focusing speeds are really just because that mirror is moving a little bit faster. Either way, better tracking and moving subjects is gonna be really important. The D4S should be able to focus faster than any camera out there except maybe the 1DX. It has a truly amazing focusing system built into it. They made some tweaks to the video capability as well because I think they wanted to compete with that uh, Canon C100 video focused camera. So like the D3300, the new Nikon D4S will be able to do 1080p at 60 frames a second. I expect this to become common in DSLRs now. That lets you slow down the footage a little bit with, while maintaining a good 30 frames per second rate. None of the Canon cameras can do that yet though, so that is a big advantage for Nikon for those interested in video. It will also provide clean HDMI out while recording to the memory card. So you could connect an external recorder and record the HDMI to that while recording to the memory card, giving you like belt and suspenders protection. In case one fails, you'll have a backup. And for people doing uh, video production, that could be really important, especially for a documentary, you know? If you're interviewing somebody, if you're catching a reality show or some moment that can't be recreated, you, you can't go back and 
recreate it if you lose a memory card. That's why you need that kind of redundancy. Again, it's a feature built primarily for professionals. You wouldn't need that if you're just recording your kid's school play probably. A minor software tweak, they've built in time lapses and an intervalometer finally <laughs> in a DSLR. My mirrorless cameras have this, like this X-T1 and this EM1 here. Uh, and it just allows you to take a picture every 30 seconds or to do, say, a nice time-lapse video. It's great for creating star trails at night, for example. And for DSLRs, you typically have to buy an external shutter trigger. You can get a generic one for like 15 bucks, but then you have to carry it with you and plug it in and keep batteries in it. It should be a software-only feature. Now that D4S has it, in the Canon world, you can also use Magic Lantern to add it to your camera. For people doing studio photography, the D4S has an Ethernet connection built into it, specifically a gigabit Ethernet connection. So what you can do is use this to tether your computer. You plug that Ethernet cable in there and it will have fast wired network speeds, far faster than any kind of Wi-Fi or USB. And that will allow you to immediately download those full images to a computer so that you can preview them, make sure that your colors are okay, make sure that everything is sharp. I use this in the studio because I can have an art director at a computer reviewing the photos and providing feedback in real time. It's terribly, terribly useful, and it doesn't work well with wireless technologies because they're just too slow. You can shell out a JPEG file, but it, you know, it might appear like a second after. It's nice to have that instantaneous feedback, and it's something that really only the professionals need. The D4 had an ethernet connection, but it was only 100 megabit. So with a 100 megabit connection, you typically see about 60 megabits of actual transfer. But with the gigabit, you get up to 650, 700 megabits if the camera is fast enough to handle that. So it could be up to 10 times faster transfer files, allowing you to transfer raw files instead of just the JPEGs. They made a few tweaks to the metering system. Now you can finally use auto ISO in manual mode with exposure compensation. And that's something I find terribly useful, especially for wildlife photography. Because often with wildlife photography, I want to add a stop of exposure compensation because I'm shooting against a bright sky. But I also want to be able to specify both my aperture and my shutter speed. Now, on most cameras, if I switch to manual mode and I use auto ISO to allow for auto exposure, then I give up my ability to use exposure compensation. It's always going to set the ISO to whatever it thinks the right exposure is. But I want to have it overexposed based on its reading. And the Nikon D4S will allow me to do that. And that should really change how I take wildlife photography pictures. I don't use manual ISO for wildlife photography because lighting conditions change too quickly. A bird might fly in front of trees or in the shade. And there's no way that you can adapt fast enough to it. So you really do have to use that auto exposure system. And now it's going to be more useful. The D4S will also be able to lock onto faces when you're looking through the viewfinder. So basically it has face detection when you're using the viewfinder before you'd have to use live view mode. With this face detection in the viewfinder, it can expose faces properly. So it will allow portraits, especially like backlit outdoor portraits to be exposed properly more often should be helpful. They also allow you to do spot metering using the live view LCD display on the back in case you wanted to do spot metering as opposed to say using exposure compensation. And they're also packing a bigger battery in there that they say will allow you to take uh, 3000 shots. So that should be enough to get you through a full wedding. Now let's talk about some of the things that the D4S doesn't have. There are lots of features that I keep hoping will make their way into these professional cameras because I think the pros could really need them. Now, I would love to see Wi-Fi in there. I love that gigabit ethernet connection, but I find it terribly useful to transfer files from my camera to my phone or my laptop through wireless. Now, why is that useful to a professional? Well, professionals have to do social networking, right? If you're out at a wedding, you might want to show off pictures that you just took. If you're a professional landscape photographer, the D4S is wonderful for landscapes with that big uh, hot, low noise sensor. Well, you might want to take a great sunset picture and then put it up instantly. Certainly, if you're a photojournalist out covering a story, it'd be nice if you could send it to your phone and put it on your newspapers, Facebook, or blog so that people can get it in a more timely way. Wi-Fi seems like it should be an absolute necessity in this professional level camera, and Nikon didn't include the feature. You'd have to stick on an external adapter, which is clumsy and isn't weatherproof and just isn't up to the same standards. 
It's also lacking GPS. They put GPS in the lower end cameras. Well, it would, I would love as a professional to have my location tracked. For landscape photographers, I would allow you to return to that same location. And again, if you're a photojournalist, how useful would it be to know the exact block and to know that it's recorded with every picture that you take? You would know exactly where you were when you took a picture. Put GPS in these cameras already. Another place to drop the ball is touchscreen. I know touchscreen seems like a consumer thing, but I find it really useful. Now, I don't know if there's not a way to make a weatherproof touchscreen, but uh, when I'm reviewing pictures on the, my cameras that support touchscreen, I love that I can just like pull to zoom in and see details, and I can drag my finger around to pan to different parts of the picture. It's a great way to check your critical focus. And frankly, it also makes it easier to navigate menus and to change settings with the touchscreen. So give us a touchscreen already. Even pros need that. Another just complete oversight is that it still includes a USB 2 connection. USB 2? How old is USB 2? It is so painfully slow to try to unload your camera from a USB 2 connection. But if you've ever used a USB 3 memory card reader, those pictures unload so quickly. So why do pros need a fast USB connection? Well, you don't have to use a memory card reader if you use the USB connection, and that can be one less thing to carry. So being able to unload pictures faster off a USB cable would allow me to travel without a memory card reader and allow me to travel a little bit lighter, and also it's one less thing to break. So give me that USB 3 already. The viewfinder is basically unchanged from the Nikon D4, and it was a great viewfinder, but it's still not as big as that in the 1DX, the Canon equivalent. The 1DX has a 0.76x magnification viewfinder, and the D4 has, and the D4S have a 0.7 viewfinder. So it's a viewfinder that's equivalent to the lower end Canons, like the Canon 6D and the 5D Mark III, but it just is noticeably smaller than that in the Canon 1DX. The D4S is priced at about $6,500 now, which is about $300 less than the Canon 1DX. Wouldn't be surprised to see Canon lower those prices so that they're more comparable. Not that pros will really be uh, splitting hairs over $300 at a camera that price. You can pre-order the D4S now, and it should be shipping March 6th. I don't think they're gonna have enough for everybody, so if you want one on release day, you better have that pre-order in. Good luck getting it, and if you wanna see more free videos like this, be sure to subscribe, and do me a favor and share and like this video too. Thanks.